fun. Let me hold there it goes. Here, hold it. Just hold I it. Have Put it. my face in the center. Don't hit no buttons. Put my face in the center. Mm hmm You want to see in the dark, like Batman, some fantasy put on TV and cryptography for children to see? You need to listen to the critters like a robin, a sidekick, right? Batman's seeing in the dark and through the walls. You got to listen to the critters like a robin. They whistle and they sing. And they tell you it's coming. I was just talking to Courtney Hunt and D. Some preparation aid about my anxiety. Because this post is a pain in the ass. It's all my whole time, but it's beneficial. God's stay the line here. Martin Cabello the Third. My name is Martin Cabello the Third, and this is my best friend Ernie. Is one of the most unique figures on the internet in recent times. Seen frequently within meme culture, most would recognize his face, but most don't know just how complex and interesting his story really is. The date is November 29th, 1977. A boy is born to migrant workers in a hot sunny side Washington. This family has no home and lives in tents alongside the land they work. At age five, the boy becomes sick, so he lays in the fields and waits for his parents to come back from work. This young boy has autism, savant syndrome, a photographic memory, and a very intense form of a condition called synesthesia. According to him, it is the ability to taste, see, hear, and feel parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that others cannot. So while waiting sick, alone and scared, the boy feels and hears the warm glow of the sun's light come down and embrace him. He calls it the body of light. This body of light taught him the story of human creation. As he grew, this boy studied and was taken all around the world to learn, including Mecca and the Vatican. This is all according to Martin Cabello. This probably sounds strange to most people. Let's get back to it later. Within recent times, Martin Cabello's most consistent online presence has been on Instagram, under the account, Tie Me to Mass So I Exist. His eccentric personality and mannerisms make him truly memorable in the eye of the internet. He speaks on diet, religion, neuroscience, quantum physics, the list goes on and on. His style of videos, starting off with what seems like a non sequitur. Got my face mask on? Yeah. Can't see my wife because her boobies is out. And rambling on about a subject. Now somebody asked me if I know any good jokes. Hello? Chiquita, you want to know how you find the creator? Well, I'll tell you, but it's bananas. What does Judaism, Islam, Christianity, and every religion tell you? Much of his large following is a result of memes of his videos out of context. To someone unfamiliar with this man, he might come off as nonsensical or random, and maybe that's the appeal. Maybe he's a troll or playing a character. But don't be mistaken, this is really Martin. He may ham up his personality for his videos, but he's not making up a persona. And the information in his videos is not just nonsense. If you stop and listen to what he's saying, things may start to make more sense. Transform her. Give her an all spark. Play a princess. <laughs> ah! Autism him. Who sees the cryptography from Walt Disney. What is cryptography? If you were to ask Martin, he would probably say that cryptography are the messages, code, and information hidden in consumer media that the general population often fails to understand. If you data mine my posts and get past the mimes, you'll see there's invaluable information for firefighters, police officers, and veterans on how Purell causes pure hell or removes all the life they need to microdose their immune system to give it the ability to repair the neuroplasticity of their psychology and memory. Like Luke, yes. can you find the Skywalker? And then Anakin, and oh. I can, and I can find the Skywalker. Let me hold your Han so, hand so you don't have to go solo. 
I got Chewbacca, I got your back. I got Chewbacca. This is good. Right? If you yeah. can do it, Mandalorian, a man lord. He talks about solving cryptography for companies and being famous in Afghanistan for tour guides. I solved some cryptography for Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Google, all kinds of technology companies and religions, and I was famous in Afghanistan, Iraq, Africa, South America, Denmark, Sweden, all over the world except for my local community for doing tour guides, putting together information on how to find Easter eggs and things like that, letting the international community see me do it in reality. Martin does have a Google account with many, many reviews, although there are probably multiple of these accounts. And he did win a contest and was invited to what I assume to be a Google headquarters building. I've been working on anagrams and cryptography, puzzles and stuff since I was a little boy. I'm the highest ranked Easter egg finder in every country in the world. I want a Google tour guide. I'm a certified Yelp photographer. He has many phrases, which he sometimes calls babble on, and heavily uses anagrams and wordplay to connect fantasy, quantum physics, health, or religion. So, cryptography is just one aspect of Martin's posts. Let's look at the health information he talks about. Martin used to be overweight, but now he's very fit and looks quite young for his age, being 44. What's the secret? Martin is a huge advocate of the keto diet. Without sugar, fruits and vegetables, or carbohydrates in your system put you in ketosis that creates ketones that oxidize into acetate that combines with the lactic acid and all the other chemicals your body creates during fasting that are shoved into a tidal wave of nutrients into your neural cortex when the capillaries of your extremities shrink, healing your brain and reversing that damage. If you can reduce the amount of carbohydrates you eat to about 20 a day, your body's metabolic state will shift to using ketones as its main source of fuel instead of glucose. It is thought to have many benefits, especially according to Martin, who says it allows for the birth of new stem cells, neurogenesis, and can prevent Alzheimer's, dementia, and cancer. Martin's address on Google is listed as a ketogenic dietitian consultant. He often recommends going sugar-free for extended periods of time, or fasting, and touting the benefits of this, many of which would take too long to go over right now. If I was a firefighter, a police officer, a veteran, or somebody with any kind of neurological condition, PTSD, anxiety, or any other health condition, Monday through Friday, I would avoid sugar for breakfast and lunch, break fast, or right the chemical sugar that stops my body from creating all the healing chemicals I do when I'm sleeping so I can create them during the daytime. He also suggests not eating fruits and vegetables which may be hard to believe for a lot of people. You think about this in real life, how long has humanity or your ancestors had modern transportation and refrigeration to eat vegetation 12 months out of the year? Raise your vitality, man, by taking a vitamin. How? I'm getting all of the macronutrients out of fruits and vegetables minus the contamination. You know, a lot of adults don't understand that fruits and vegetables actually clean the environment of toxins. Yeah. That's how the earth cleans itself. You know how many people uh, uh, above your, you know, uh, you know, 20 years and older don't understand that? They don't have the education for that. Mm -hmm. But you know, they just were never taught that, so they don't they don't understand how things work. On the roof, the beauty in the moonlight over through you. Much of Martin's information is tied to religion. He says that religion and science work together in unison. He says, The first sips of natural sciences will make you an atheist. But at the bottom of the glass, God is waiting for you. Martin believes in a body of light, hiding behind or in front of the sun. Its electromagnetic radiation creates all of humanity in its image. Uh, every religion's son of God, messenger of God, or God is the same. The only difference in religions is they prevent you from knowing knowing that yeah every single religion it's the same one the only difference is we tell you uh, we don't tell you how to see it or, or or find it so that you don't know if I'm telling you the truth or not we can see what it looks like at least according to him through his comics and his pictures body of light with a head a torso two arms and two legs 
standing in the center seven seals of the electromagnetic spectrum, or Allah, the light of the heavens and the earth. All just one God that many different men have hidden so they can give you different perspectives and different information to believe in. The camera is a way to see the body of light with the right angle and position. I personally have been able to see the body of light by lowering my phone and pointing it up at an angle near sunset, or at least something similar to Martin's pictures. He says it's a class 5 energy being. Humans aren't even a one, but at a class 5, a class 5 energy being exists in the center of all of the light of the heavens and the earth. It has a head, a torso, two arms, and two legs, and it can create man from dust. And I'm going, tell me that class five again. And <laughs> something in phys physics class, I'm like, repeat that again. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he blew our minds. Synesthesia plays a big role in Martin's religious statements. He says that due to his full-blown synesthesia, he's able to perceive a much wider spectrum of electromagnetic radiation than the average person, allowing him to see the body of light without the use of a camera, tabernacle, sun disc, or monstrance, which he says each religion uses to see the body of light. Martin advocates fasting to purify the light that makes up your body through the recycling of damaged cells, also known as autophagy and apoptosis. He claims this strengthens your coherence and quantum entanglement with the body of light, which could possibly allow you to receive information from it. Perhaps similarly to his claim when he was sick as a child, but what is quantum entanglement and coherence? Martin's username on Instagram was tie me to mass so I exist. What does this mean? In physics, first you have to understand, is time real or is it a man-made construct? And I always state time isn't real, it's a man-made construct. And I'm gonna use this chicken egg, right? Everything that makes this chicken egg become a chicken came from the light and will return to the light per religions and per the top of science and quantum mechanics, right? This chicken, if it was to be fertilized and exist, only experiences time when the light it came from is tied to mass, right? Tie my consciousness, tie me, tie me, time me to mass so I can experience this construct that we call time, that is man-made. Because if I wasn't tied to mass, there's no time for light that I came from and I will return to when my vessel returns to dust. Time is man-made. This is the section of Martin's information that is the most out of my field, but I'll do my best to try to provide my interpretation of it. Let's look at his book for the explanations. Quantum Physics. This describes physics at the smallest scale, where matter only has a probability of being at a certain place at one time. Light behaves like a wave and as a particle. The three main quantum phenomena are tunneling, entanglement, and coherence. Tunneling describes a particle passing through an energy barrier that is higher than its own kinetic energy. Entanglement describes when one quantum system has interacted with another and their waves become entangled so that when one collapses, the other collapses instantly. Love is not the satisfaction of a chemical reaction, but the sensation of a neural network's quantum entangled electromagnetic radiation. Match your frequencies ideas and thoughts to the reality you want and you can't help but get that reality of love. Coherence is based on the principle that all particles have wave-like properties. If the wave-like characteristic of an object were split into two, these waves would interfere with one another coherently. Rather than forming two separate waves with unique properties, the two waves would superimpose upon each other and form a single coherent wave. The book also explains conception, consciousness, mitochondria, and sunlight. But let's take a step back. This book has a rather tumultuous history. Since the start of his most recent Instagram, Martin has made many posts referencing Dr. Courtney Hunt, MD, and her associated company, Genetic Protocol. He was often seen with the genetic protocol pills in his videos, and talking about their benefits. I was just talking to Courtney Hunt, MD, about my anxiety. Does wonders for me. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate your support. 
and um, being able to talk to you and, you know, you being there for me. Thank you very much. Courtney Hunt is a gynecologist in Arizona. But you can tell the twitch in my neck has gone away and my mood for my meltdowns and my interactions in public are a lot better. Martin, if I didn't tell you this before, you're a genius. Martin, your followers have been asking me if I follow you on your lives and today you did a really good job. I do watch. At times he even seems genuinely excited about receiving the pills in the mail. Mail, mail, mail. Make you want to wag your tail. Blues, clues. Look at Didn't get enough sun in the summer, and now your health's a bummer. Who you gonna call? Courtney Hunt, MD, and genetic protocol. Right. Immunity boost protocol. Let's see, how am I supposed to? Two tablets daily. I'm gonna take these right now. Boop. Then they announce their book. The Apocalypse in the Story of Adam and Eve that unites all of humanity as the true tribe of Israelites and was promised in the beginning of Abrahamic religions. If you'd like to know the quantum mechanics of human creation, please check out mine and Courtney Hunt's book, Your Spark is Light, The Quantum Mechanics of Human Creation at www.yoursparkislight.com. In late July of 2020, Martin uploaded a post saying, Please help me report Dr. Courtney Hunt, MD, for exploiting a traumatic brain injury and giving me false memories to pretend we went to school together so she could steal information to make her son a false prophet for her business profits. It is malpractice and fraud. You can report information to www.azmd.gov. Thank you for your support and kindness. In a second post, he said, If you pay attention to my social media accounts, I already had a six-pack and was in shape when I lived in Ocean Shores, Washington, and Yelm, Washington. Me and my wife have been beaten, raped, and blackmailed into pretending I take genetic protocol. There's literally thousands of witnesses. Courtney Hunt is a gynecologist. She does not have a license to treat traumatic brain injuries, kidney failure, liver failure, or any of the other illnesses I suffered from. That is the reason she did not want blood done across state lines, where she wasn't legally allowed to practice. Notice how Martin says he was forced to pretend to take the pills. But in an earlier video, we can see that Martin took the pills out of the package, opened the bottle, and swallowed a pill that was inside the bottle. And this was all during a long, continuous take. So I imagine he wasn't pretending that time. Courtney responded indirectly, and distanced herself from associating with Martin. One post said, Just sit in silence and watch the show, with the picture saying, Once you have matured, you realize silence is more important than proving a point. It isn't clear who wrote what in the book, and maybe we won't know for sure. Martin claimed that she wrote it. Hey Courtney. Courtney's writing a book for me. You guys want to, want to bug me about the book? Y'all bombard her, her Courtney Hunt MD? Or genetic protocol, you can I bombard that page with questions about a book all you want. Save me some time. Then later claimed that she stole it using extortion, and Courtney says they wrote it together. It's really a mess of a situation. Martin believes Courtney was trying to register his information in her name. Keep this in mind. She threatened me with bodily and physical harm and my wife and financial destitution if we speak up and tell the truth. But all of the information she has was stolen from me prior to me uh, knowing her while I was working for the international community. And then she wants me to pretend it was her children I was taking care of so she can exploit God's grace. Martin claims he felt comfortable enough to speak up after waiting for his traumatic brain injury to heal. Another important note is that Courtney currently holds the copyright to the book, but they both have different versions of the book for sale on Amazon. I suppose now I should mention a disturbing night of research that I experienced. During my research, I was anonymously sent a message by someone else interested in Martin's story. They told me that they were sent a strange message over Instagram. They said, It was a username, written using hexadecimal, that sent it. It seemed like a bot or burner because it had no activity and no profile pic. It didn't even follow anyone, but it popped up in my message requests with a photo saying, Find a key to win a RAR from the Lion of Judah. 
and some more hexadecimal numbers reading the same thing under it. This person then sent me the original file, a low resolution PNG of an FBI agent figurine, titled Deep Seed. I used WinRAR to extract it, like implied in the message. Extracted, there was a folder within that contained six screenshots. Due to the advice of the anonymous messenger, I will not show the messages themselves. This person told me, this kind of information is dangerous. They also said, it's best to not get caught up in this stuff, might end up another victim depending how deep you go in. Out of caution, I will vaguely describe what they entail. Most of the screenshots were Instagram DMs with Dr. Courtney Hunt, but in one of the photos, it seems that maybe she incriminated herself to falsifying a marriage license to Martin steal his intellectual property by gaining rights as his legal wife. But I still can't even be sure, because most of the messages are out of context, and the language used is rather vague. And remember, this is just my interpretation from looking at the situation. I can't know for sure what's really going on, so take this as you will. Listen, I don't have much time. I have some very important information to share with you. Martin Cabello had a brief stint where he created a website for his religion, Cabelloism. The creator of the website eventually stopped working with Martin after a dispute over copyright, but I still do have an artifact relating to that website. On the front, it says Cabelloism Disciple, and on the back side, well, it's one of Martin's quotes relating to religion. Well, I hope you enjoyed the rest of this presentation, but I really need to get going. A huge staple of Martin's older videos has been an endorsement of the clothing brand Helly Hansen. He created his famous phrase, Helly Hansen makes me hella handsome while I lend a helping hand son. This became a big meme for him, with many of his audience members repeating the phrase and him reposting the videos. Helly Hansen makes me hella handsome as I lend a helping hand son. Because honesty and integrity is, is part of our corporate policy. <laughs> when I trek the mountains and sell seven seas, Helly Hansen makes the breeze. Somebody reported my GoFundMe again about misappropriating funds because um, they said I'm sponsored and get money from Helly Hansen. I do not get money from Helly Hansen. But somewhere along the way, his endorsement ceased. He began questioning his past with them. Somebody asked me, right? Has that honesty and integrity part been implemented at Helly Hansen? You guys watch them, right? Gaslight my wife and psychologically manipulate her into doing things that would make me commit suicide so they can have access to that slogan. Some of the management that surrounded my wife, right? And, and people today are asking me, did Helly Hansen actually uh, implement that honesty and integrity as part of their corporate policy? Then things turned ugly with him saying he remembers them exploiting him. I had a meltdown in the Goodwill the other day, and people reached out and asked me why. There was a man in there, right? So I got removed out of my house and had a memory wipe by the same people who brought my wife home after somebody brought her home um, severely inebriated and being told she was going to be sexually assaulted. And those same men accosted me in a Goodwill, right? And they specifically told me they were representatives of Helly Hansen. Then, we get a revelatory piece of information that his wife worked there as a customer service representative. Somebody asked me what I do for a living. I want you to think about Helly Hansen and my wife being a customer service representative for Helly Hansen. Martin's wife was terminated from Helly Hansen, but it's not known if this was related to Martin's posts. Here's my gas can. My brother Josh blew himself up and his two kids. What at first seems like absurdist humor to an outsider reveals something far more sinister when you actually listen. Right after members of the military like Alan Jaber did, did, did to me, psychologically gaslit him, set up fake rape scenarios, psychologically torturing people, physically torturing people. When you have 
low-level members of the Marines and the military turn on your own fucking community, who the fuck do you turn to? You look for an out and you fucking kill yourself. And you gotta think about this shit. How many people have committed suicide because people in the military are fucking approachable, corruptible? They're out there willing to do whatever it takes to protect pedophiles, right? And what would you have to do in your history that would allow a pedophile to reach out to you and ask for your support into getting somebody else to kill themselves or destroy a family? What would you have to fucking do to be approachable? Oh. It was a twisted murder-suicide. Two young boys killed at the hands of their father, Josh Powell, in a terrifying end to a long and sordid nightmare. Police say Josh Powell tried to kill his seven-year-old son Charles and five-year-old Braden with a hatchet before the fire could take their lives. I don't know if his intent was to try and put him out before the fire got him, but he didn't do a very good job of it. Josh Powell was no stranger to police scrutiny. He was the prime suspect in the disappearance of his wife, Susan Powell, missing over two years now. Just before 12.30 Sunday afternoon, the two boys were escorted to Josh Powell's home by a caseworker for a court-ordered visitation with their father. Police say he locked the caseworker out and ignited two five-gallon cans of gasoline, sparking an explosive fireball that leveled the house, killing both boys and Powell. And they say there were signs he had been carefully planning his final act. He donated their toys to a local charity over the weekend and sent goodbye emails to several people. People want to know how things work out. Literally, I got accused of somebody swatted me for killing my mother. I'm going to start using that swat. Well, it's called swatting. They do it in video games where they call and say, oh, somebody's some, you know, yawning out of this. The neighbor behind me, I don't know if you know the pals. Their son was part of my group of people who did international foster care. He ended up committing suicide. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wait a minute. Yes, Powell right. with the two kids? Yeah. This one he's saying is somebody else. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So he he, uh, he committed suicide, and people ask why. I'm like, we, you know, in, initially he reached out and said, I'm being harassed and psychologically tormented and told I need to do things, and I can't, you know, I can't deal with it anymore. And he ended up taking his own life. And I uh, volunteered to say, I'm. Uh, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll volunteer to pub you publicly send kids to my house and we'll see how it works out. Martin says Josh blew himself up because the military wanted him to kill other people. This is Martin's side of the story. Martin claims Josh's wife killed herself in a hidden spot and Josh was blamed for it. His wife disappeared and he was accused of murdering her. He did uh, international foster care. He protected sexually exploited women and children. Right, and then I talk about my neighbors, Al and Jerry, that live next to the wife of Joshua Powell's parents and how they uh, are creatures of habit. And um, Al and Jerry were known in their past to set up rape scenarios to induce gaslighting and Stockholm syndrome. Um, so because it was part of their past, somebody knew they could ask them to do that to me and my wife. And those are the things that would lead a woman to kill herself, right? In a, in a place where maybe her children can't see and find their body, and the husband would be uh, accused of it because of, of the way the, these veterans set situations up, right? The actions that they do in our community that children got to witness is what leads people to suicide. You don't just wake up and go, I'm going to blow myself up. We have to put that psychology in you. How many people, how many American soldiers have died because my neighbors, Al and Jerry, uh, create and, and hunt down sex traffic victims and children so that they can be sex trafficked throughout the military. I never had more than one child, Martin, it was my body that carried it. I would have felt the stress and all the weight that I would have had to carry again. No, I had one kid. Miha, Al and Jerry beat the living shit out of you. Susan Powell's parents beat the living shit out of you, okay? Yes, Miha, they tried to, Miha, they tried to, now we're getting somewhere. We have doctors in our house. They tried to murder me so you wouldn't remember you had your kids stolen. I love you, it's real. What's real is you freaking lost your mind. My neighbor down the street breaking in my house and pretending or uh, attempting to rape my wife and then Al and Jerry coming in and, and stopping it <clears throat> after I got hit in the head and I wasn't supposed to remember I work for the church. Martin's views on his neighbors, of course, are very contentious. 
that the Homeowners Association, local authority, FBI, and certain neighbors are responsible for aiding in sex trafficking and extortion, as well as the cover-up for those crimes. According to several of Martin's neighbors, he was just a regular guy until 2015. In this post, he says, This man had himself tied up after women and children were raped. What information would require him to do that? I could not verify the identity of this man in this picture, so take this as you will. He claims that several people have induced traumatic brain injuries in order to take advantage of him and his information, as well as cover up sex trafficking. One time I got hit in the head, real bad, and I woke up abducted in ocean shores, and then Alan Jerry since then have been breaking into my house, pretending to stop people from raping my wife. They're fucking criminals. They should not be allowed to be around children or fucking even be going to these homeowner association, association meetings where they're gonna hit fellow community members in the head. You think about the shit Al and Jerry and the military and the police have been recorded doing on servers in third world countries. As a favor for me, you could report Al and Jerry for doing that stuff. Despite Martin's claims, the local authorities say that no sex trafficking has ever occurred in Martin's neighborhood. According to Martin, the police turn a blind eye to his neighbor's crimes because his neighbors have blackmail on the police. I don't know if you can see this sign. It's a picture of me. It says, caution, there's a predator. Whoever put it there, can you make sure you put it at the rest of the bus stops? So you, you won't relieve my property, you're refusing. You're, you're trespassing, leave my property, sir. Do you have a warrant? Do you have a warrant to be on my property? Do you have a warrant, sir? Do you have a warrant? So you, you're lying about having a warrant and trespassing. Thank you for, well, then you, you can't be here. So, you, so then you're lying about having permission to be on my property, thank you. Thank you for lying. Thank you for lying about having permission to be on my property. This is called, this is called gaslighting to induce Stockholm syndrome manipulating somebody with a traumatic brain injury illegally. Who is this recurring Ernie doll and what purpose does he serve? This doll acts as a proxy for Martin and allows him to process his past trauma or a process known as transference. And hopefully the only injuries he sustained is a damage to his forehead, which will close up with some staples. Now we gotta tie Ernie to this tree. He won't stop making a body of light that is real light appear in the seven seals of what a rainbow reveals. What is the purpose of Cabello's account? He would say, it's to help others and to share information. Recording your daily life, right? On a Google tour guide, Amazon, Facebook, uploading your videos and your pictures so that later on in life, if you're a veteran, a firefighter, or a police officer, and you sustain a traumatic brain injury, you'll have the videos that hold the neuroplasticity of your psychology and memory for your family or a prescribed treatment my wife was talking to me about seeing a counselor um, in private one-on-one -on -one, right every counselor she takes me to see asks me to do my information digitally over social media for everyone to see right? because of the psychology behind the things that have happened to me and her or to help with his autism. So my concern about the swatting thing is that if, if somebody calls and makes a false report and then we come out and then you stream it, then they're getting some kind of secondary gain. No, 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 no. It, yes. I, no, well, to exactly you, but it, right. to, 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 uh... I ask you to turn it off right now. Will you turn it off? No, this is my, this is what I've been asked to do because of my, for, for my... So what I'm telling you is what you're doing is I mean, I don't have to... causing well, I, I got a prescription. I got, the, uh, you know, this is part of my stimming. I have autism. It's part of my, part of how I deal with my overload to make sure somebody doesn't say I, you know, I've been accused of, of, of you know, because autism you have meltdowns. I've been accused of having meltdowns when no meltdowns ever occurred. 
so part of the the judges in Pierce County, you can check part of the judges and the council's thing was recorded being streaming. What's the meaning of life? Help others. The Instagram account calling out your BS has served to try to expose Martin's claims, mostly against his neighbors. The account claims he used to work at Joanne's Fabrics around 2012 or 2013, but was unemployed following a very bad neck injury. Martin has shown pictures of this injury on Instagram. They claimed he signed up to take care of two foster kids due to the financial aid he would receive. However, the most interesting thing I could find on the account was a restraining order Heather had against Martin in 2015 while they were living in Tacoma, Washington. She said, I found some drugs in my home that were my husband's and flushed them down the toilet. He started yelling and threatening and pushing me around. I didn't know my husband had a drug problem until yesterday, April 21st, 2015. He brought a stranger in our house that was supposedly an ex-drug addict who was looking for help. At the time, I thought we could help her. As the day went on, I noticed some strange behavior and asked her to leave our house because I didn't feel comfortable. My husband turned on me, defending her, so I called my family for help to come over and talk with them. When they showed up, he asked them to leave, but I didn't feel comfortable with my husband and the stranger, so I asked my family to stay. Then my husband freaked out, resulting in him assaulting my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, as well as my son. She said they left their home and stayed the night with some family, and that he threatened to put his hands on his son multiple times. In 2016, she redacted her restraining order, claiming the event was a result of an allergic reaction. She said, I am my husband's caretaker. He is disabled. My husband had an allergic reaction to prescription. No domestic violence happened between us. A post shows that Martin had a restraining order from his mother, Josie or Curry. About five years ago, my husband and I were called to Martin and Heather's house. As Heather said, she needed help, so we showed up. As we walked in the house, Martin, our son, was choking our grandson, Pedro, and my husband had to pull him off. Our son, Martin, got so upset that he punched me in the face and he pushed my husband, Darren, so hard that he fell and cut open his hand and was given 14 stitches. My husband, Darren, also ended up at the hospital with a big hematoma from the fall, which also causes him lots of other medical issues. Our son Martin also has lots of videos where he's constantly posting and saying threatening things about our family. As for me, I ended up with a broken thumb and that pain never goes away. And for my husband Darren, he's still living with all the damage that was done while trying to help our grandson Pedro and his wife Heather. People ask me all the time if I've ever killed anybody. When I was a little boy, my dad groomed me to report illegal activity by watching cops on TV and things like that till I eventually reported him for selling cocaine. He got arrested and my mom beat me every day till he came home and then he beat me. And to pay off the debt they gave me to the gang that they got the drugs from. And I was such a wild child they gave me back and took my two brothers in exchange sex trafficking. And I ended up, I ended up killing them. And then later on in life they showed back up at my high school and I killed them again. And the leader of the gang, I believe was MS-13, made me an honorary member for killing pedophiles and sex traffickers. He thought it made his organization look bad. Autism, I know this, you know, some people try to deny it, or I, I know, and I know that people don't like it, which means people don't like me. You know, uh, that's, since I was a kid, my own mother didn't like me. The account also shows the conviction papers for Martin's arrest for assault. A post from another neighbor on the account further elaborates on the previous restraining order altercation. Martin started using drugs and invited a female addict into their home. That is when things got very serious. At Heather's request, Martin's parents came to talk to him, an intervention of sorts. Martin beat up his mother, broken thumb and facial injuries, and attacked his stepfather, who ended up in the hospital with a back and a hand injury. He also tried to strangle his son and hurt his wife. 
The family members then fled their home and left Martin in the attic at the house. The next night, Martin was arrested for four counts of felony domestic assault. The addict was also arrested because she had two bench warrants for drug charges. Martin was sentenced to 364 days in prison, but a liberal judge reduced it to 60 days in jail. This jail anecdote is backed up by Martin, although he never talks about felony domestic assault. I guess my son's name, my wife's name, heart on my sleeve, things like that. I got them. Um, when I was working for Catholic Community Services, I got injured and I was told I needed to get tattoos in preparation to go to jail. My mother had been arrested and spent time in jail for faking assaults and refusing to be removed from people's locations. My brothers, my mom, or her brothers, my dad, she actually spent time in jail for it when she did it at my house and the police were aware of it ahead of time for my background check to work for the church. They allowed her to do that, and um, I had to have tattoos ahead of time so I could go to jail. I have autism, miscommunication problems, and I was injured, so I didn't understand I was being framed and set up. Martin later mentioned that he got locked up with a man named Chavez, who always wanted to practice drills. But not much else is known about Martin's time in prison. The neighbor also says that Susan Powell's parents are Martin's close neighbors, which is backed up by Martin's claims. They also call Josh Powell a maniac. They said, Martin talks loud. When Martin is yelling into his phone, you can hear it more than two houses away. So when he is in his backyard yelling about Susan and Josh Powell, I'm sure that Susan's parents can hear him since they live right behind Martin's house. They claim that two neighbors have moved out after discovering Martin's post. The account also shows that in 2021, Martin received a cease and desist from the Westmore's Homeowners Association regarding defamation and slander in his posts. The main argument that is set forth by the user is that Martin makes up accusations against his neighbors in order to get money from his followers. In the latter half of 2021, Martin went to court regarding grocery outlet bargain market and anti-harassment. On the date of his Zoom court, Martin posted an update in Zoom link on his wife's Instagram, Cabello Heather, which is run by him. He also did a live stream. On October 28th, the day after his Zoom court, Martin Cabello's Instagram was deleted. I cannot confirm if this deletion was Martin's doing or Instagram's, or if it could be reactivated in the future, but it is very possible that the deletion of his page was related to the court terms. Following this deletion, Martin currently streams on Facebook. I'll be on my Facebook for a while. Spread the word. His wife's Instagram page and on TikTok, despite several of his TikTok accounts being taken down in the past. I was wondering, the doodle caca, right? Yeah. I was trying to learn more about it. So, um, basically, there's not much to learn. When you were a baby, you crawled around on your hands and knees, correct? Yep. And it didn't matter if there was rat poop on the grass, bird poop, lizard poop, snail poop, ant poop. It didn't matter, you still put your hands in your mouth, right? Eating that goo goo and caca from all of that life. Now we're just gonna go over some interesting facts and information that I haven't got the chance to cover yet. Marn claims he has a dead man switch with all his information for when he dies. He said in a TikTok reply, I have a server that holds all my information until I pass. An interesting discrepancy in Martin's posts is regarding his religion. Recently, he has said that he is an Islamic poet and he was forced into Christian conversion therapy when he was younger. I was born an Islamic poet and you didn't even know it because of extortion. But on his Yelp page in 2013, he said that he's been a Catholic all his life. Much of Martin's past has not been linearly available, but using information from his stories and online sleuthing, we can try to connect bits and pieces from his past. Like previously mentioned, Martin claims his parents were migrant workers. Online records and Martin's anecdotes show his mom to be Josie Akuri. What's mom's name? Josie Akuri. Uh, she did insurance fraud. You guys had to come and deal with the situation here a few years back with insurance What's fraud? He says he has her phone number blocked and has no contact with her. 
I, she called me a few months ago and I blocked, I don't know how she unblocked, got my number unblocked, but um, I have no contact with him. His dad is Martin S. Cabello, but he may also go by Martin S. Cabello Jr. or Martin M. Cabello Sr. I'm not entirely sure based on conflicting online records. At a young age, Martin was sent to a very expensive school for nonverbal autistic children by his maternal grandfather, Alberto R. Canales. While Alberto was Catholic, Martin's grandmother, Mercedes, was Muslim. Martin also had a police officer uncle. My um, uncle for Thurston County was a police officer and Thurston County was a police officer and he got killed. So supporting um, the National Coalition for Police and State Troopers is a big deal to me. Martin loves his wife. Morning, babe. I was offered all of the world's treasures and all the earthly possessions for some of my information and I chose a princess. She's a very, very um, wonderful and beautiful spouse. And uh, she des deserves all of the things that I do because she has to put up all my garbage. <laughs> Rosy cheeks. This is my beautiful wife. How did they meet? Martin says he met his wife in the Air Force. Somebody asked me how I met my wife. The Air Force put her in my life. They told me her parents were king and queen and she was a princess. And one day I would be a king. I, I worked on some cryptography puzzles and things like that, and I had met her father through the Air Force. And um, I would go and do things, and she was always there. And then um, we fell in love or whatever, and she got pregnant. And we went to um, Pierce County Courthouse to get married, and a judge said there was no way he would allow us to get married. And her dad called the Air Force, and um, the Air Force went down there and spoke to him. Because once a judge says something, it makes them look bad to go back on their word. Um, and he, I had to go and sign up for the Marines and, and uh, do an assessment, and he changed his mind. Me and my wife were, were married by a judge, or allowed to be married when a judge in Pierce County said we couldn't be because the Air Force intervened and gave them paperwork, Pierce County judge, stating me and my wife had autism. This is where things get muddied. Some neighbors of Martin claim that he got a high school education at Cedro Woolley High School and that he met his wife there. Heather. She was born in 1981, roughly four years younger than Martin, and apparently her grandfather was a surgeon for Walt Disney. I met her by working on some cryptography from Walt Disney. Her grandpa was the surgeon for Walt Disney. Which may have to do with Martin's infatuation with Disney cryptography. Martin's biological son, Pedro, is currently 25 years old and is believed to have moved out of the house, but it seems he has made appearances in Martin's videos. Best day of my life? or the best I've had in a very long time. My son came over and visited me, and I got to hug him twice. We hear who we can assume to be Pedro in the background. So, I don't Simulation know. theory. I like, out of a job. I make my notes like Jean-Luc Picard. I know, I don't want to fucking job. Right? What did it be? What was, what was Jean-Luc Picard's thing? Keep this appearance in mind. One of the earliest online presences I could find of Martin was in 2013 on his Yelp page, though he says his online presence extends all the way back into the early 90s. His earliest available post about a martial arts business mentions his international foster care and his son and foster kids training there. In 2014, he made his Flickr account under the name Bud Brothers Podcast. He also registered two websites with a similar name in this year. It is believed that he was going to start a weekly podcast with a brother about weed, hence the username. On the Flickr page, there can be found many intriguing clues and photos. We can see what may be one of his foster kids in two 2016 photos. In a 2017 video from an old account, we can see who appears to be the same child. Here goes. Look at the Lord's original life. Yeah, look, all of the Lord's original life. Huh? Yeah, look. For is, that, is it atoms? God's invisible force. Atoms. Right? Atoms. Right, Eve? Before everything? Atoms? <laughs> In 2014, Martin had critical kidney failure and was able to recover without using dialysis. The story goes, he got shot 
and his liver and kidneys shut down, so he went on a ketogenic diet without the toxins from fruits and vegetables. I got shot and my kidneys and my liver shut down and I had to go on a ketogenic diet or stop eating fruits and vegetables because that's where your body gets most of the toxins that your liver and your kidney have to filter out of your system. While living in Ocean Shores, Washington, Martin was essentially banned from the Quinault Tribal Gaming Agency for alleged false statements. He posted photos saying that he was a victim of their hate crime and said he's embarrassed to be associated with them, also showing a tattoo of the Quinault Indian Nation. He said, thanks for the hospitality. Off Flickr, Martin talks about assault in Ocean Shores, also mentioning Alan Jerry. Some of the people that I've come into contact with, um, their wives have gone missing, their children have gone missing. They've ended up blowing themselves up and killing themselves, right? We've learned enough stuff from my neighbors, Alan Jerry, and the men in Ocean Shores trying to ask me for paperwork they don't have authorization to, and how not doing morally and ethically what you're supposed to do financially in your community allows you to be approachable. For a while I was getting abducted by men in Ocean Shores. The police department there and the pastor at the church um, wearing a red coat came to an apartment I was staying at there and gave me fake military paperwork and they gave me fake paperwork. And when I realized that the paperwork wasn't faked, I wouldn't give them their information. And my neighbor, Alan Jerry, and some of the men in my community helped them abduct me over and over again. And when they couldn't get the information from me they wanted, uh, I think they thought they killed me because they wrapped me in garbage bags and buried me on a beach. Real life shit. His other online accounts were Red Hive on YouTube, Tumblr, and Instagram. I left up the um, Red Hive one f for the... You know, pictures of the dog with the goggles that has the IP address. But if you can't figure if you can't figure it out from there, <clears throat> kiss my booty. <laughs> if you can't figure it out from there, kiss my booty. Oh, good boy. Also up. Up, 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 up. Good boy. Up. 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 Before his Tie Me to Mass account, he also had several other Instagram accounts. One was My Babble Physics Project AI and Anon Guided. But I could not find out which ones were deactivated by Martin or by Instagram. One of Martin's older accounts apparently had over 16,000 posts. Hello everybody. Waiting for my wife to get off work and posting pictures on the internet trying to cause ruckus. Bored. Asperger's. What else am I going to do? Hello America. It was as easy as moving light with Like previously mentioned, an interesting part of Martin's past is the fact that he has been to prison in 2015. If you pay attention to my anonymous tour guides and things like that, I've already spent time in jail and taught this information to uh, the criminal underworld, right? I already got framed, I got my tattoos and things like that, never had these before. I got them for the sole purpose of going to jail. Currently, Martin is 44 years old and lives in Puyallup, Washington. Currently, his wife works at Walmart, while he makes money from Cameo, a celebrity shout-out service, his PayPal, and his GoFundMes. In the past, he says, him and his wife did godly work to save women and children from sex trafficking. He does have a foster home license, but this expired in 2017, and he claims that before foster care, he was a sex traffic victim. You know, before, before I did international foster care, um, I was a sex traffic victim. I've been, you know, a few times in my life sex trafficked. In August of 2021, a throwaway account posted the Martin Cabello subreddit, claiming Martin Cabello was their uncle. Although they provided proof of a photo from his family, and it should be reasonably believed that this person is related to Martin, they seem to be making claims with very poor explanations and little to no evidence. Firstly, 
they imply that Martin is lying about being autistic. Tell you you don't look autistic. You ever have that? Like you don't look autistic. Oh, you're like God. you're diagnosed with something, and but and somebody else who's not goes. No, I think I know more about it than you do. I don't think you have it. <laughs> I get it all the time. You don't look like you have autism. I'm like what does autism look like? Like I never even knew it had a look. Even from an outside perspective, this doesn't make too much sense. Martin has made hundreds of posts discussing his experiences with autism. This poster's credibility is further weakened when they suggest that Martin could have developed autism from his alleged drug abuse. This obviously is nonsensical. The poster goes on to claim that he left his adopted son and daughter, and real son, and drifted away from his family. The validity of this claim is unknown considering it seems Martin's son has made an appearance on his page. The original poster also claims Martin used to party a lot and abuse coke. Months later, Martin revealed the poster to be his nephew, Isaac. People keep asking me, have you read your nephew's Reddit account about you? No, but what I can tell you is about the Battle of Mount Vernon, or General Hospital, where my mom had convinced my sister if she got pregnant, she could sell the baby because it might have autism like me. And some very bad men showed up to buy my nephew Isaac. A battle broke out. <sighs> Full out war. So that I could save my nephew from being sold. I was able to escape with my nephew. Is what Martin's saying true? On the surface, there is no immediate evidence provided to support many of the claims about his neighbors. When asked for proof, Martin claims that he's not risking his life for a stranger online. When Martin makes these claims about his neighbors and Courtney Hunt, many people claim that Martin is schizophrenic, especially on his subreddit, most of which has turned against him. He claims videos exist of him and his wife being exploited. But obviously, he said he won't show these videos to strangers on the internet. What is certain is that Martin seems to believe mostly everything he says. His stories over the past few years have remained extensive and surprisingly consistent. For the most part, Martin's explanations tend to line up with what he said in the past. If what Martin's saying is false, then he would be at the very least misguided or having delusions. But if what he's saying is true, then the situation grows immediately more serious. This would have massive implications for corruption and sex trafficking in the military, FBI, and Puyallup law enforcement and sheriffs, not to mention his neighbors. If what he's saying about his community is not true and Martin is having delusions, that means it would not be a good idea for his audience to egg him on in his beliefs. Knowing this, it's probably best to watch everything from a reasonable distance. There are quite literally hundreds and hundreds of hours of Martin content online. I've barely even scratched the surface of what's available, and I still felt burnt out several times during my research. I often felt like maybe I bit off more than I could chew. Maybe this is more about him. His documentation of his life for himself to keep track of things, and to express himself and spread information. His own unique way of living.
Look what I got. Fan mail from my friend Anthony. It says, Martin Cabello, Barry Blast. Hi, Martin. I wanted to remind you that I greatly appreciate your free info and the best of luck with your book, Anthony. These repeated sequences are helping with my memory quite a bit. I am just a conscious vibration observing my little section of life sent from my iPhone. I don't remember 